Hi everyone, Nicholas Barfitis here from the Junior Senior School in Cyprus and I'm back with another Microsoft Teams tutorial and this one's all about certain functions or options that may be missing when you try to modify the meeting options for your classes. In particular, the allow meeting chat option seems to be missing, um, the ability to add shared meeting notes and the ability to have a shared whiteboard. So let's get right into it. I'm going to show you a quick example where the problem is. So first of all, we need to have a look at an example where the options are missing. So here I've got a lesson. And in fact, why don't I just schedule one very quickly. So the way us educators would normally schedule a lesson will be we'll go to our team, go to the general channel, and then from here we're going to do schedule a meeting. Okay, I'm just going to give this a, a quick name, uh, Teams Options. Okay, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. So you can set the repeats, so it repeats every week. If it's a lesson that's repeating every week, so on and so forth. And that's basically it. Once we've done that, we set the days and the times. So I'm going to leave this as is, um, so we can find it on today's calendar. And I'm going to click on send. Okay, so what that what, what that has done, hopefully, if I go to my calendar now, is actually scheduled the meeting. Here it is here. And I've got over on this side a student account so if we go to the calendar of this student account, we can see this has also been scheduled for that student as well. So let's just minimize that and go back. All right, so let's have a look. Our next option is to go back and set the settings or the options of this meeting. So I'm gonna double click on this to open it. And the first thing that I'm gonna see here is I've got the shared whiteboard option is missing. Uh, the meeting notes is missing. And when I click on meeting options, so here are the meeting options, they open up here. We can see that we get the, you know, the, the classic meeting options, but the one that's missing is allow meeting chat. And the allow meeting chat is where we're able to control the students not being able to chat before the meeting or before the lesson, and they're not able to use that channel uh, or that meeting to chat again later on after the meeting. So that seems to be missing as well. Now, I, for one, thought that this feature hadn't been enabled yet on my tenant, and then I realized that that wasn't the case. So let me show you how you can resolve this issue. I'm going to just click on close here. Um, now, first of all, if you create the, the meeting through a team, like we did here, it's not going to give you those options. Okay, so you to do that and to get it to work, you need to create your uh, the, the scheduled meeting through Outlook. So I'm going to go to Outlook and we can see here that Outlook actually scheduled the lesson uh, which I just booked just now through Teams. But if we want to have those options for all our lessons, we need to reschedule them. So I'm going to create another lesson here, another schedule. So I'm going to double click in Outlook. Keep in mind you can do this with the offline version of Outlook and with the online version of Outlook. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is click on Teams meeting because this is going to be a Teams meeting and I want it to schedule in Teams. Secondly, I'm going to give this a, a quick name uh, so that students can identify what this is. So I'm just going to call this, just so just for this tutorial, I'm going to call this Outlook. So we know this lesson was actually created through Outlook. Outlook Teams uh, meet, okay. And here, here's a really important one now and this is where you need to do a little bit of practice or just have a look. Uh, because there's there's a lot of options that you can do, more options that, that you can normally do using Teams to schedule your meetings. So in the required field, we need to add the email address of the team. So how do we find that? Now, if I go to my team, we can see here that this team here is actually called Teacher Training. And there's a space there. Now, I'm going to show you the quick way of doing this. I'm going to go to General, go to the file section. Okay, and I'm going to click on opening SharePoint. And over here we can see it opens my file section in the SharePoint. And at the top where we've got the URL, I'm just going to copy this. Copy some of this so we can actually have a look and see what information is here. Copy that and we'll put this in Word. There we go. So I'm going to... That's the ones I was working on before. There we go. So here it is. I'm going to paste that there. Now then, the first thing I want you to notice is this thing here. This is the domain of your school, okay? Straight after the HTTPS. 
Now, I, I say this, but all of you probably know the domain of your school, but it may be that your school has got more than one domain, like our school. We've got like the junior school, the senior school, uh, the ju and the junior and senior school. So the primary domain which your tenant was registered on is listed here. So I'm just going to copy that, and that's going to be my email address. So that's going to be at, let's just go down. So that's going to be at, at that, that. So when I create my email, it's going to be this. Now, if we look straight after where it says sites here, okay, this is the name of your team. And you can see that doesn't have a space. So if you're not sure how to actually create the, the, the name part of the email address, then you can just get everything that you need for the email address from that URL. So I'm just going to copy that and put that there. Okay, so this is going to be at the junior school dot com. And that's my email address. Okay, so that I can simply copy now go to my calendar and I'm going to put here in the required field I'm going to put that email now I'm going to give you a bonus tip here so a bonus tip with this video with teams if we want to schedule uh, a meeting we're not able to schedule more than one class team okay so if I want to schedule a meeting here for example and I try to add a channel let's say I'm going to add my uh, my year 10 channel here, the general, but I also want to uh, schedule this meeting for another class as well. So it schedules for all the members of this of this team and another team. So let's say I'm going to put my teacher training one now and I click on general. Can you see it replaces it? So I can't add two teams by scheduling through teams. Okay. However, from, if I discard that, from Outlook, it is actually possible. So that's your bonus tip. So from here, if you know the email address of another team, you can actually just put teacher trip. Oh, actually, I've got the teacher training. So let me just show you how we can add the next one. And because I want to show you something else as well. Uh, many teachers, I've noticed, uh, the next year, instead of creating the next academic year, instead of creating a new team for their students, they tend to rename their team. And that causes a little bit of confusion because the actual, when you rename your team, uh, it may sh display the new name, but the email address is still the original name of the team when you created it. So let me just show you that before I show you how to put the next one here. So if we look at this team here, this one here is called IGCSE Option 2 2021 NP. And you can see I've got my initials at the end of this. So if we do the same process as before, I'm going to go to general. I'm going to go to my file section and click on open in SharePoint. And there we go. That's open in SharePoint. And I'm going to copy this URL again. And let's analyze this URL now. Okay. So I'm just going to copy that part there. Control C. Let's just go back to here and open Word. So let's see what the email address is for that team. So again, we can see we've got the junior school. That's the domain. That's always going to be the same. So I know that's going to finish as at the junior school.com. I don't need to worry about that because that's always going to be the same. However, if we look at the name, there we go. You can see that the name of this team looks like there's spaces, but there are no spaces. Those are underscores. If I copy that and paste that there, you can see some. Can you see it doesn't have the NP at the end, whereas the team itself does. And that's because the original name of this team was actually IGCC Option 2 2021 without the NP at the end, the underscore NP. So if I want to schedule a lesson using Outlook for this team, I need to use the correct email. And that's the original one. There it is there. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go to here and I'm going to paste that in there as well you can see now I can actually schedule this meeting and I can set up my uh, reoccurrence so if I want this to happen every week every two weeks depending on the timetable and I can schedule that for both these classes so this is really good if you want assemblies and instead of creating a one big team and adding all the students in that one team so you can have like a remote assembly uh, or an announcement you can actually just use existing teams and just add them in the required field that all the students will get that 
calendar. So I'm just going to remove it from there because I don't want my students getting confused with another lesson there. Okay, so all I have to do now that I've put the correct email address there, I'm just going to click on send. And if I go to my calendar now, okay, here it is. So it's actually scheduled. We can see it's the right one because it's got the correct name, Outlook Teams Meet. Let's go have a look at the students one uh, as well. So this is the student account, which is a member of that team. And you can see it's also been scheduled here. And the student can actually join from here. So remember, if you've got more than one uh, team that you've added the email address in the Outlook meeting and when you schedule the meeting, it will actually send it to all the members of all the teams that you add. And that's a really, really good tip there for you. Okay, so next step, let's go have a look and see what options we have with this one. So if I double click on this, there we go, straight away you can see I've got my meeting notes options here and the whiteboard. And the meeting notes are basically notes that you can create. So if you enable this, it will take notes and it will create the chat section for this, uh, uh, this meeting and you can actually put notes in there and everyone can add notes. The whiteboard, really, really good feature. So you can have a whiteboard that you're going to collaborate with your students or you can have a whiteboard which only you can edit. So if you want to use the whiteboard, and you want to be making some notes while you're doing remote lessons and you want the students to have access to those notes without you having to take a snapshot and then paste it in the in the Teams channel, you can actually just use the whiteboard feature. Okay, and the last one, if I now go to meeting options, there we go, so let's jump over here, we can see the meetings options up and there we go. We now have allow meeting chat and you can actually disable that and put it in meeting only so students can only chat when they're in the meeting itself not before the meeting and not after the meeting okay so that um, should cover practically everything remember the quick tip and I'll just tell you why um, it, it, this issue occurs especially with the naming if you renamed um, your team and the email address which reflects that team is actually different to the name Okay, so it will actually, in SharePoint, if I click on SharePoint, there we go, it will actually create a new private group, a private SharePoint for every team that you create. And the name of that uh, SharePoint site is actually the first name that you give your teams. So here's the one that I had before, this one here, and you can see when I click on this, its name at the top is actually just that. Although the display name, it has got the my initials at the end, the site itself doesn't, okay? And that's why that's going to be your email address. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure you click on like, make that little bell ring, and make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with any other tutorials that I post. Take care, see you again in the next video.